How's it going everyone? Uh, today what I've got in store for you is my personal tier list of all the weapons in Second Extinction as well as a few of my choice loadouts and builds. I'll try not to bore you too much but if the tier list is all you're after click the timestamp and uh, check that out or if there's a particular weapon you're searching for I'll also leave those timestamped. Just a quick general disclaimer all the builds are based on insane difficulty as is the tier list. All of the weapons are viable at lower difficulties, some of them are just not optimal. So uh, starting us off first is the scout rifle. The scout rifle is often a go-to for many FPS players, however the scout rifle in second extinction is far from as powerful as it m its stats might suggest. The damage fall off from shooting over distances is too high, critical hits can be inconsistent, and the dinos move too quickly when swarming. If you are however inclined to use it, make sure you're playing on normal difficulty as it can be a lot of fun ragdolling the dinos to oblivion. A few choice builds could be uh, using weapon drilling to reload quickly after a kill, deadly efficiency to increase your damage provided you don't miss any headshots, and performance incentive. That allows you to fire off about 8 rounds very quickly after getting a critical kill. This perk is highly useful against large dinos. Another possibility could be to go for that stealth sniper feel and try pop the dinos off before they see you with perks like resourcefulness and from the shadows. This will let you keep your ammo up and kills coming. However, this playstyle does not fare well once you are found as you'll have a hard time de-aggroing the dinos and it won't allow you to remove the large dinos with any relative ease. For those, so for those reasons, the scout rifle is widely considered to be the worst weapon in the game, as it stands alone at the bottom of this tier list in the F class. Next up, we have the grenade launcher. The grenade launcher is another that many new players flock to only to be sorely disappointed with its lack of AOE damage and difficulty in landing shots. For that reason, it's not a great option for single uh, small targets and you'd be better off using your secondary. It had once been a powerhouse, however nerfs to explosive damage have had a huge impact in its usefulness. It is still somewhat usable when playing in a group, however it is more of a support weapon used to flip flatbacks and remove armour. But other than that, it offers very little. A few uh, build choices that could work include using deep pockets for increased ammo, volley to offer some burst fire capabilities, impact detonator and hair trigger. This mix of perks allows you to burst fire three shots across a horizontal plane to slow down incoming dinos, as well as allowing you to blow off the armour of more powerful foes but you still won't be surviving without the help of a few fellow Extinction Elites. Your other choices include specking into using Zero Waste to increase reload speed when emptying or focusing, um, instead on Uninterruptible in order to reload instantaneously upon taking damage. The latter build is a higher risk, higher reward, as the operatives who are the only class who can use the grenade launcher have the lowest health pool in the game. So again, this gun is another widely considered to be very bad by many in the Discord community. I would rank it a D tier, only because of its usefulness, if you could call it that, in a team situation. But it would not be my first, second or third choice. Moving right along, we have another launcher, that being of the rocket variety. The rocket launcher is unlocked at level 15. It is exclusive to the Enforcer class heroes in Rosie and Jack. The rocket launcher, unlike the grenade launcher, is a vastly superior in every way. Its explosive radius is larger, it deals greater direct damage, and the beefy users of the weapon allow you to reload without worry worrying too much about the health you're losing doing so is a flatback flipping machine and thus very useful in a team situation or in particular the later waves in horde mode. A few build choices you could use uh, include focusing on extended mag, direct impact and uninterruptible. This is an all around loadout that allows you to break down the armour of dinos quickly, 
whilst also allowing you to reload quickly, provided you allow yourself to be hit, which is typically not a big deal for a big issue for Rosie or Jack, one having a heal ability and the other increased damage reduction. Another choice you could go with is Auto Loader paired with Uninterruptible, which you can use in extraction points to sit on top of the ammo crate and just wail on any and all dinos and not worry about your ammo usage. This method pairs best with Rosie as she has that all too powerful heal. A third choice could be to go with the extended mag, direct impact and split warhead. It offers a greater upfront damage at the expense of reload speed. This can be uh, countered with the pairing it uh, with the perk of the revolver gun which we'll talk about shortly. Overall, the rocket launcher sits firmly as a solid choice for all across all difficulties, solo or in team play. For those reasons, I'd place it firmly at the A tier. Coming up to a personal favourite of our current community manager, Kami, we've got the minigun. This was my first weapon of choice back when I first started playing so I'll always have a soft spot for it. It's extremely fun to use, blowing round after round into the dinos with the chunky goodness flowing everywhere. However, it does la lack damage when dealing quickly with larger dinos, but it can be buffed when playing close to allies. It's another enforcer-only weapon, leaving again it just to Rosie and Jack to take charge. My personal choice when using the weapon is scraping the barrel, a must have in any minigun build allowing you to gain ammo back as you kill, auto rotator to get firing quicker, and thermal rerouting giving you fire damage as your gun heats up. A common theme amongst all minigun builds will be both scraping the barrel and thermal rerouting as they offer the largest DPS on the weapon without question. Another option could be to add deep pockets and zero waste at the expense of auto rotator so that the gun is faster to reload plus you'll have more bullets to have fun with. Or you could instead go with a more team focused build by picking up friendly fire allowing you to deal critical damage when near nearby to allies. All minigun builds should be paired with the revolver with the idle hands perk to aid in its reload as its reloading speed is abysmal. As it stands, the minigun is an extremely fun gun to use throughout all difficulties, and I'd rate it in the B tier given its high ammo requirement. However, you can always run the ammo grenade pack to try circumvent that one minor downside. Next up, we have a personal favourite of mine, and in my opinion the strongest of the secondary weapons in the SMG. The SMG without upgrades doesn't offer very good spread, mag size or total ammo, but with the right perks you'll see the light and never be without it again. It, when specced as I do, will allow you to remove burrows in one clip and allow you to unload into large dinos before flipping back to your primary as you wait for it to reload for you. My personal choice of build is to put perks into deep pockets, extended mag, holster helper and weakness exploitation. This will allow you to remove the burrows with ease as well as pair it up with my personal favourite gun in the carbine rifle. We'll get into gun pairings later. These perks work well together to allow you to flip to your secondary, blast, it away, blast away all your ammo, then swap back as you wait for it to reload. Another option you could use instead is still perking into deep pockets, under pressure, weakness exploitation and shock grounds. This will allow you to use your SMG to set up your own large dino kills if they are electrified. Plus, under pressure keeps you reloading quickly when in the middle of a firefight. This is a build I would use if I was to play as an enforcer class as they don't have access to the carbine rifle. Now, although I love this weapon, it cannot be considered an S, A or B tier as it is just a secondary after all. And for that reason, it sits firmly in the C tier with the rest of the secondary weapons. The secondary weapons are the most balanced in the game, with each having a few choice builds that you could use that will allow you to see success. Moving on, we have the Assault Rifle. The Assault Rifle is a solid, solid all-around pick. 
that is a traditional in nature and familiar to most FPS players. The assault rifle has reasonable damage, ammo and accuracy. When perked well it offers a good mix of armor shred as well as offering you extra grenades. Some build choices that I personally like are picking up deep pockets, target bias, emergency resupply and slug shot. This allows for consecutive hits to deal more damage, some critical hits to provide you with grenades back, perfect for all of you grenade spammers out there, and slug shot which removes armor plating like a hot knife through butter. Another choice if slug shot is not your ideal pick, you could take extended mag instead. Just make sure you've got a teammate who can remove armor to help out or run frag grenades. Overall, the Assault Rifle is a solid pick for the troopers in Ortega and Jürgen. It is a good starting point and will allow you to farm effectively until you move on to some of the higher tier weapons. I would rate it as a solid B tier choice. Now we have my personal favourite and the creme de la creme of weapons in my opinion, the Carbine Rifle. The Carbine Rifle offers great long range damage, trash dino removal and large dino destruction. It has been nerfed recently by the explosive radius reduction, however that has not taken anything much away from its raw power. For building, it hands down the strongest build is to run resourcefulness, weakness exploitation and lead poisoning. These perks allow you to keep your ammo high, damage up and weaker the larger dinos for your SMG to come out and do its work. This build is best paired with Jürgen, however works well with the other heroes too. If Snapshot was working correctly, you'd put that extra point of impact into that perk. Instead, it is currently bugged and not working as intended. Another option you could use, although I believe it to be suboptimal, would be to you focus on poison and poison spread. This is more of a team based build with the perks of Black Widow, Infectious and Double Tap being added. You'll chew through more ammo, but if fighting in a team, it will allow more dinos to be poisoned and thus weaker for your whole team. The Double Tap is there to help remove those large dinos quicker and small raptors to spread poison faster. It is with no surprise that I rank the Carbon Rifle the only weapon in the S tier, as it is the perfect solo weapon as well as works well in a team situation and it deals with all dino varieties. Up next another contender for top spot is the machine gun. The machine gun offers a high fire rate and good damage at the expense of some accuracy and stability which can be easily fixed when selecting perks. Build choices include going for smart ammo so that the bullets will target the dino's weak spots, target bias, consecutive hits deal more damage and armor penetration. You could swap armor penetration for perhaps sluggish as a personal choice, but that would be up to the user. Another build, still using smart ammo and target bias, you could instead add extended mag and unflinching. So from a distance, use your smart aim, and as the dinos encroach on, on you, aim down sights for more precision. You could make the argument that the machine gun is also an S tier weapon, but as this is my tier list, it is a solid A tier from me, with it being one of the most reliable of the weapons. This next weapon is a favourite for those who want to ragdoll the dinos and blow them up into those sweet, sweet chunks. The shotgun is a great deal of fun, however its lack of ammo, slow fire rate and reload and its inability to shoot dinos from a distance bring it down a bit. It is a fantastic secondary weapon if you're playing as Ortega, but it's not a very good gun to use as your primary. A build I would use involves double tap, allowing you to fire three times in quick succession, which is enough to remove a burrow and deal good damage to large dinos quickly. Steadfast for when reloading in the face of danger. Counter attack, as you'll often need to be up close and personal when fighting with such a short range weapon. And under pressure, so you reload faster when dinos are around. You could make the argument that Dragon's Breath is a good perk, however it was severely nerfed a while back and pales in comparison to its former self. As the gun doesn't function well enough as a sole primary, I've put it into my secondary gun tier list so it's a C tier from me. 
Although fun to use, it does not offer you enough as you move through the difficulties and the dinos require more bullets to kill. The newest addition to the arsenal is the hand cannon. This weapon deals high damage at the expense of low ammo count and long reload timer. It only has one build that is of any real value, although the weapon in itself is extremely fun to use. Arguably the best perk to go for is Fireflies, which when using both shots deals half of a bull's health and pair it with Holster Helper. So it's a flip into and then back to your primary and repeat. It has the added bonus of also being able to remove burrows quickly as well, which is the real use of any secondary weapon in my opinion. Again, given it's a secondary weapon, I can't justify it being placed any higher than a C tier. Another relatively new addition as well is the Artillery Cannon. The Artillery Cannon is another weapon that is a great deal of fun on lower difficulties letting you ragdoll the dinos onwards and upwards. It doesn't however continue to be useful as the difficulty increases. It suffers from poor perks and a lack of any real use other than some supportive fire much like the grenade launcher. A build that you may have some success with includes building increased mag, direct impact, zero in allowing for hip fire accuracy and dynamo which is the, its best perk allowing you to burst fire quite effectively. Overall the weapon, although fun at times, lacks any real oomph as you progress and is more of a fun weapon to blow some dinos away. For that reason, it sits besides the grenade launcher on the D tier. Second last, we've got the revolver. Many people would argue that it's the best secondary weapon in the game due to its ability to one-shot raptors at lower difficulties and its enjoyment factor of just blowing the brains out of a raptor. which rarely gets old. It does however suffer some weaknesses with its recoil and fire rate, which can be somewhat fixed with some perk upgrades. Its real use and specialty is with its perk idle hands, which when you hit a critical shot, which is almost always, you reload your primary weapon, which makes it great pairing for any of the enforcers who use weapons that have a long reload time. I'm looking at the rocket launcher minigun and artillery cannon. The revolver has a few good builds that you could mess around with. The first one looks at zero waste for that reload speed, fresh delivery to give you bonus crit for 12 seconds when you manually reload, idle hands, which is perfect for reloading your primary in a pinch, and snapshot, although not currently working, when it is working is a very good perk. Second build focuses on using a revolver more as a primary weapon. So you take off idle hands and replace it with resourcefulness to try keep your ammo count up with the rest of the build staying the same. Third, we have a focus on using the revolver to fire off quick rounds into the belly of a front lap back, neck of a rex or some other large dino weak spot. It includes zero waste, quick draw to instantly get that bonus damage, a fresh delivery for extended fights and hair trigger, which lets you fire off all of your bullets very quickly, making for short work of things like flatbacks. Again, as it's another secondary that is relatively balanced, as they all are, there's a few different build paths to suit your own playstyle, I'd still only place it in the C tier, as secondary weapons really shouldn't be any higher. Finally, we have the original, the pistol. Uh, the pistol offers about as much as you'd expect. It does what it needs to without doing too much or too little. It's just average across the board. My personal choice for loadout of the pistol is extended mag, holster helper, CQC honed for close quarters damage and target bias. Again, I focus more of using my secondary as a flip in and out weapon and then let it reload for me. This build will deal the damage up close, which is when you typically swap to a pistol, so it does what is intended. Another build you could try out would be Extended Mag, Fully Automatic and CQC Honed. This is purely for unloading all of your bullets quickly to remove a priority target such as a flatback, bull or rex. You could also argue to take points out of Extended Mag and CQC and put them into target bias instead 
but that would be a personal preference. As with all secondary we weapons, the pistol sits firmly in the C tier, with the other secondaries being slightly better, but not enough to move the pistol any further down the list. Well, there you have it. My personal tier list and some builds to test out for yourself. The carbine being the S tier, machine gun and rocket launcher for the A tier, minigun and assault rifle in B, uh, shotgun and the rest of the secondaries with the SMG, revolver, hand cannon and pistol in the C tier, D tier rounding us out with the grenade launcher and artillery cannon and sitting firmly at the bottom holding us all up is the scout rifle. Just a quick note about some choice weapon pairings. The carbine rifle is a great pairing with the SMG. And the revolver, uh, when running idle hands, pairs well with the rocket launcher, minigun and artillery cannon. The machine gun also pairs well with the hand cannon to help uh, fix some of the machine gun's weaknesses. So, there you have it. Do you agree? Disagree? I'd love to hear some constructive uh, feedback about your thoughts. Was I too harsh? Too biased? Well, as always, happy dino hunting.